So, I just thought I'd take some time today to go over an update on the technocratic dystopian hellscape uh, we are forced to live under. And um, I think a really good example of that is the self-driving electric car. Now, for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know that um, I go over um, the problems with Elon Musk on a semi-frequent basis. And um, I'm one of the few people in, in, you know, a lot of truth spaces who are willing to acknowledge the truth of Elon Musk being an evil um, statist, you know, multi-billionaire working at the behest of the elites. Because so many of them have this, like, jack-off Tony Stark um, fantasy about the guy. Um, and I go over the fact that he's a con artist, that he lies regularly about what his products will be, and then just doesn't have the product, um, that he treats his workers like shit, that his products and services are, you know, in direct service of the elites, and that he, uh, qualifies by all available markers as tantamount to the Antichrist. Like, the whole purpose of, of the Elon Musk brand is to muscle through um, the sorts of statism that anti-statists would normally hate. That's it. Yeah, especially just right-wing anti-statists who believe that, nah, some billionaires are okay. I mean, they're not, but... <laughs> uh, 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 apart from the no ethical consumption under capital, uh, state capitalism, um, I, I think we can all agree that stealing money from other manufacturers would be evil. But most people don't know what regulatory credits are or the fact that regulatory credits are keeping his businesses afloat. Regulatory credits are when uh, the government says, we don't like what this business is doing, so we are going to steal their money and give it directly to a competitor who we do like. It's a technocrat's, like, wet regulatory dream. Um, and his grandfather was a fucking technocrat who literally ran on the technocrat party. You know? Maybe it's not a fucking good thing, right? Right? Maybe it's not a good thing to have a family of technocrats and then <laughs> then have this family of technocrats uh, produce somebody who is doing the technocrats' bidding. But um, the, the whole thing like really comes to a head with things like Starlink, which can connect to mobile devices, which means that there will be no uh, black or gray zones in terms of global surveillance statism. Um, and what it means is that they will be able to put a device wherever the fuck they want and surveil whoever the fuck they want, wherever the fuck they want. Um, and it also means that any devices used to control people will be able to be put anywhere, anywhere they fucking want. You know, that's the reason they're doing all this in Ukraine is so that they can build, uh, one of the first Western, you know, smart cities, smart, smart countries, and they, they need to really break it down so that they can justify rebuilding it in this way, with all the latest advancements and blah, 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 um, and they're gonna sell people e-citizenships to Ukraine in order to fund the new society, which the actual ministers said would be running on, like, you know, uh, dystopian smart city technology, the likes of which I've been talking in my videos about, um, you know, the domestic facial recognition surveillance and China's facial recognition surveillance for a significant period of time now. Um, 
And so they, they want to build that everywhere, and Elon is helping with that, and it's already evil, right? But one of their factories, uh, <laughs> uh, one of their recycling plants caught fire, um, and this is just the latest Tesla-related fire. Um, and this, this Tesla-related fire uh, happened in Berlin. So, activist post... Uh, you know, go follow him on Twitter, uh, posts this thing, Tesla recycling plant catches fire. Local environmental protesters call for immediate stop to production. So that's what it is. It's, it's a giant fireball waiting to happen because all these batteries are explosive and all of these batteries are explosive and produce, you know, chemical fires. You can't just spray chemical fires. You've got to have enough in uh, e enough chemicals, which are terrible for the environment, in your spray that it retards the flames. So they know this. They know that these batteries are massively unrecyclable and unsustainable, and they know that any little thing can cause something like this. Do they care? No. You know? And, and like... It gets worse when you think of, like, these people are environmentalists that, that claim that these cars are necessary and should be mandated. And, you know, by 2035, California will allegedly be banning anything other than this option. So it's it's really ideal and perfect, isn't it, that this is the way things are? I, I don't think so, but you can think so if you want. Uh, additionally, because of what's going on here... Uh, there's there's an article about this uh, from Zero Hedge. You can read that if you want. But the, the person who reposted this to Activist Post uh, says that Tesla vehicles have been and continue to be associated with battery fires and, and fires that are difficult to extinguish. To be fair, <coughs> battery fires and fires that are difficult to extinguish have also been reported with other companies' EVs as well. Regardless, last week a Tesla battery caught fire at a, Calif at a California utility substation, and last night a major fire broke out at a Tesla recycling plant in Berlin. So, this article is about this fire. How, how a major fire appears to have broken out at Tesla's Berlin recycling plant, prompting a local group of environmentalists who have been fighting the company to call for Tesla to stop production. Overnight, uh, Electrek reported that Tesla's on-site fire brigade, on-site fire brigade, guys, uh, called in help from the local fire department. Because they needed that. They can't just have a local fire, a th fire brigade in their thing that, that's good enough. They needed the local fire brigade, too, because you know, he can't afford to hire really good people in that regard, I guess. Um, <laughs> isn't it funny to have a local fire brigade that doesn't work and and then need to call in the public? Why, do, why not just have the public fire brigade? Oh, because redundancy. Well, then just don't have the battery recycling plant and don't make EVs. It's so much easier than this. Um, local news reported that a large pile of cardboard and wood caught on fire at the recycling facility located at the factory. The report said that 800 cubic meters of paper, cardboard, and wood caught fire. The blaze took firefighters hours to get under control. Twelve firefighters from Tesla's own brigade assisted with the fires. No injuries were reported, and the fire did not spread elsewhere on the facility. But one blaze set off another... Environmentalists who've been fighting Tesla every step of the way uh, on the German plant are now calling for a stop in production. A group called Citizens Initiative uh, Grunida BI is calling for an immediate stop to production. A representative from the group commented, Our worst fears have come true. We demand a production stop until the causes and circumstances have been clarified and all safety-related measures in the water production area have been implemented. Tesla has not issued an official comment as of yet. So, um, it goes over fucking other Tesla problems, you know? Uh, and it's, it's, 
so many, so fucking many, right? Um, and then like you get to the to the things that were listed up here already. Like I'm not gonna click all of those because it's just about fires that this video is. But Tesla's world is on fire. Like look at this. Two men die in a Tesla crash. Approximately two thirty two thousand gallons of water over four hours needed to put out the fire because of the fucking battery. And it says earlier this month, Tesla owners wondered aloud about suing the automaker if full self-driving would never be possible like the company originally promised. Other complaints about Tesla include crashes and other potentially fatal mechanical and operational issues. Last night, two men died after the owner's Tesla crashed into a tree. <sighs> Man. So... Because of the battery, it required 32,000 gallons of water. And this is one of them. Um, 11 tons of water in special container for remains, still a fire hazard three days later. And it's not just Tesla either, as the article said. It's also, you know, <laughs> Tesla battery fire utility substation closes highway. That was recent. Um... Worldwide EV recall due to fire risk. Don't drive or charge them. More EV charging fire woes. Batteries can reignite hours or even days after they were initially extinguished. <laughs> GM had to recall 141,000 Chevy Bolt EVs due to battery fires and explosions. Of course, battery fires not isolated to bolts. GM recalls all Chevy Bolt models, including EUV co uh, crossover, due to battery fire risk. Second recall of Chevy EVs due to battery fires. Life with an affected car is going to be a lot less convenient than it used to be. Hyundai recalls 82,000 electronic electric vehicles due to battery fires. Fires are a problem with other EVs too. <laughs> and more thousands recalled by GM. And just this this is this is recent. Tesla vehicles have been and continue to be associated with battery fires and fires that are difficult to extinguish. And this is another Zero Hedge article that <laughs> there are reports of utility scale battery fire at PG&E facility in Moss Landing, an area located in Monterey County, California. A fire causing the road closure on Highway 1 is not at the Moss Landing power plant. It's at the adjacent property of PG&E substation and battery facility. Local media says the fire has forced a temporary closure of Highway 1 along a six-mile stretch from Portero Road to Salinas Road. Bloomberg headlines note that fire at the PNG substation originated from a Tesla battery pack, but the size of the utility-scale battery uh, has yet to be determined. Here are images of the fire. And then it's just like... You know, it's, it's kind of a fucking problem. And, and, you know, I, 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 coincidentally, before I saw this link, I was already commenting on Facebook, trying to, uh, you know, sort of goad people into looking into, to Elon Musk a little bit more. And, and so I commented on this post where it says, a businessman cannot force you to buy his product. If he makes a mistake, he suffers a consequence. If he fails, he takes the law. <laughs> oh, what a naive bitch. Uh, Ayn Rand, being Ayn Rand as usual, glamorizing and um, glossing over any issue that makes capitalism look bad. Um, so, Elon clearly isn't one of the people who has to uh, suffer the consequences of his mistakes or take a loss at failure. And he can force people to buy his product because that's exactly what he fucking does when he uses government facilities and government forced to take government uh, supported regulatory credits from other business. Like, he's, he's a, he, he, he steals. He, he takes government uh, support and he uses it to steal from other people. That's how he keeps his whole thing afloat. You know, he's a, he's a massive state capitalist cunt, and people still support him. So I needled people about that down here. I said, cool. So because of regulatory credits and grants, we all hate Elon Musk, right? 
and uh, it went about as well as you can probably es expect, um, at first anyway. Then I had a good exchange with Dan Lyons down here because I went over it and I said, you know, are you familiar with the fact that Tesla cars can be remotely turned off and returned to the manufacturer upon non-payment? Are you aware of the fact that they're hooked up to mobile chips and Starlink reaches mobile devices? Are you familiar with the fact that Starlink and Neuralink both talk to one another with very similar technology not too long from now? Or with the fact that creating a lack of dark zones on the planet means a universalization of the surveillance state? What about the fact that centralization of global internet means the elites can turn it off at will? What about the fact that he has techno te technocrat relatives and statist tendencies. Why am I supposed to assume that the guy responsible for creating this infrastructure with government money, force, and facilities has goodwill at heart? I mean, I'm not going to assume that, but to be clear, I'd like to hear your arguments for it. So, you know, it went about as well as you can expect. And he, like, he, he eventually said, you know, hey, I agree with you, man. Because I'm right. I'm right about Elon Musk. I'm right about Tesla. I'm right about SpaceX and Neuralink and Starlink and his technocrat relatives. And I'm right about the fact that his vehicles are worse for the environment than their gas counterparts long term. Because lithium ion fucking explodes. I'm right. I'm fucking correct. Okay. So anybody who wants to come at me about that, um, you know, you're welcome to. Let's 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 have a conversation. And speaking of conversation, feel free to subscribe to my email newsletter, which will be uh, in the description. Um, and subscribe to the Agorist Nexus podcast as well to see more stuff that I'm doing. Um, there's a variety of things in the works, and every subscriber I get, every bit of financial support I get, which there are also links in the description for that, every bit of that I get, the closer I get to making a statist's day worse. So, uh, feel free to help me do that. Um, anyway, fuck Elon Musk, smash the fucking state.